Right, let's start with the daddy of all affordable home computers, and it's British. It's 1982. Your mates have got the new Atari and BBC microcomputers, which cost 300 quid you haven't got. But then the ZX Spectrum comes out. It's more powerful than the other computers on the market, and it only costs 125 quid. Life will never be the same again. Its 3.5 megahertz processor and 16 kilobytes of RAM could barely handle a page of text today, but back then it was a revelation. There were literally thousands of cheap games you could buy all loaded onto the Spectrum using a regular cassette player. Games like this one, Paperboy. Look at it. Full colour, great graphics, really playable, addictive, in fact. No wonder that 90% of ZX Spectrum owners were under the age of 18. The Spectrum took off so fast that after just six months, there was a massive backlog of 40,000 orders. After a year, sales had hit a quarter of a million. But it wasn't all about the games. This is a computer, and it uses a computer language called BASIC. Now, BASIC could be printed in magazines and books as code. You'd then read the code and input it manually on the squashy keys. Eventually, after hours, I can tell you, you'd have basic software, word processors, spreadsheets, the kind of software that you find on a modern PC. This programming ability inspired some of its users to create their own software, the legacy of which remains today. The people who founded one of Britain's most famous gaming companies, Rare, started out on a ZX Spectrum. They then went on to create huge games such as Donkey Kong and Banjo-Kazooie. So I think it's fair to say that this little retro box of tricks is responsible for kick-starting the whole of the UK IT and gaming industry, which even now is recognised worldwide. The ZX Spectrum. Inspirational, versatile and iconic. And, Otis, the clear winner. If Jason wants to play the iconic and inspirational card, then he's going to struggle against me. The most revolutionary home computer has to be the iMac. Up until 1998, home computers were big, boxy machines. The iMac changed all that. Apple boss Steve Jobs famously said that the back of his computer looked better than the front of everyone else's. This was the start of Apple wrapping computers up in lusty art. But don't mistake it for some clueless pretty boy. There was some serious thinking behind it. When the iMac was launched in 98, the internet was really starting to take off, but seen as complicated by some to get on it. OK, well, I found it really difficult. What the iMac was designed to do was get on it easily and quickly. And it worked. For the first few months, an iMac was sold once every 15 seconds. A massive 800,000 units in just 139 days. It was the fastest selling Apple computer ever, thanks in no small part to some ice cool adverts. This jog any memories? It also simplified the way devices were connected to a computer. There was no floppy disk or old-style sockets, just USB ports. It took the rest of the world about three seconds to realise, hey, that's actually not a bad idea. And it's stuck to this day. But the designers didn't stand still. So the next iMac, this G4, was even more radical with a flat panel LCD screen. And the current one is made of aluminium with all the computing power you would expect while still being a piece of functional art. And you know what? This was the very first Apple product to feature an I in front of its name. Imagine the world of computing without the prefix I. You'd just have tunes, pod, photo, balls. The Apple showed us the way with revolutionary eyes. Up on the wall, please, John. Both absolutely fascinating stories, gentlemen. I've got a couple of questions. ZX Spectrum, great success, wonderful seminal computer. Why aren't they doing it today? Why did they give up? Do you know what? If I had the money, I would relaunch this as a modern netbook device. I think it's an enduring classic. Otis, the iMac looks horribly out of date. You'd be ashamed of that in your living room. You wouldn't use it for your computing now, but remember, first of all, it is a work of art. Secondly, it made surfing the internet easy for people like me. Ooh, iMac versus ZX Spectrum, both legends, both legends of computing. Ooh, but I think 
the winner has to be the ZX Spectra. Yeah! Hey! <laughs> huh? 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 Who's a daddy now? Huh? All right. Because oh. basically, it launched colour computing for the home and the whole British IT industry. And for all those reasons, the ZX Spectrum deserves its place on the Gadget Show's Wall of Fame. Yeah! <laughs>